What would happen if Pavel Bure played in today's NHL? Let's find out. Sadly, Bure is not in the game, so we had to create our own. Sitting at a 92 overall, he will be playing on the first line of the Vancouver Canucks with Pedersen and Kuzmenko. We are going to be simming 10 seasons total. He is currently locked into a three-year deal with the Canucks, but he's free to do whatever he wants after that. And the Vancouver Canucks would finish with a 46, 27, and 9 record in year number one, earning 101 points for eighth in the NHL. Pedersen would end up leading the Vancouver Canucks in points with 84. Bure took second place with 83, but Bure would lead the Vancouver Canucks in goals with 37. Patrick Kane, as a part of the New York Rangers, led the league in points with 108, while also leading it in goals with 61. And the Boston Bruins are your Stanley Cup champions after beating the Winnipeg Jets in six games in the finals. Vancouver would win in the first round, beating Vegas in six games, beating Calgary in seven games in the second round, but losing to Winnipeg in six games in the conference finals. Marshawn led the entire league in playoff points with 27, while Alex Ovechkin led it in goals with 15, playing in only 12 games. That's crazy. On 19 playoff games, Burry only scored five goals, getting six assists for 11 points total. Patrick Kane is your regular season MVP. Charlie McAvoy wins the Norris. Burry is able to pick up the Calder, and Brad Marchand is your playoff MVP. Also, Spencer Knight grabs the Vesna. Wasn't expecting that one. Year number two, Burry is already up to a 94 overall. He's playing with Pedersen and Mikheyev. The Vancouver Canucks would somehow miss the playoffs, finishing 15th in the league. They finish with a 42, a 35, and 5 record, earning 89 points. Burry would lead the Vancouver Canucks in points with 88, while also leading them in goals with 41. And Alexander Ovechkin, at 38 years old, is still dominant 108 points to lead the league 61 goals to also lead the league but Dard ended up being an anaheim duck he would finish with 19 goals 51 points in his rookie season austin would capture back-to-back -back stanley cups after being the nashville predators in the finals in five games even though ovechkin had the most goals and the most points in the league mcdavid would win mvp make it make sense i guess it is the most valuable to his team but i feel like ovechkin was pretty valuable to washington Hughes would win the norris Dard unsurprisingly captures the calder last year was marshaw this year was pasternak for playoff mvp and john gibson wins a vesna Murray is up to a 90 six in his final year of his first contract with vancouver i'm interested to see if they sign him back vancouver canucks would end up being first in the entire league this year with a 50 28 and 4 record earning 104 points Murray led the vancouver canucks once again in points with 90 he also led them in goals with 40. Cole caulfield would lead the league in points him and nate just tied with 99 points while alexander ovechkin led the league in goals with 54 and the seattle kraken are your stanley cup champions after beating the philadelphia flyers in five games i'm sure this is everyone's dream Stanley Cup Finals, right? As for Vancouver, they would lose to San Jose in the first round in six games, a heartbreaker for sure. And John Cena himself, Matty Beniers, led the entire league in playoff points with 30, while it would be Yanni Gord leading the playoffs in goals with 11. I mean, in the six games, Burray did show up four goals, four assists for eight points. Martin Natchez is your regular season MVP. Eric Carlson wins the Norris. Shane Wright wins the Calder. John Cena is playoff MVP and Markstrom captures a Vesna. Murray decided to be boring and re-sign with the Canucks for $8.6 million for one year. On the bright side, they did amazing, finishing fourth in the entire league, earning 100 points with a 48, 30, and four record. Murray would have 86 points to lead the team while also leading the team in goals with 33. Close your eyes, Leafs fans, as I'm trying not to look at this. Austin Matthews on the Flames is leading the entire league in goals with 56. Now it's Edmonton's turn to look away as Leon Dreisaitl on the Islanders leads the entire league in points with 103. I mean, I respect Burray's loyalty and all, but I think it's time to get out of Vancouver. Edmonton would win in the first round in six games, meaning Burray has zero playoff luck so far. Well, the Winnipeg Jets would end up being your Stanley Cup champions, beating Carolina in five games. And sadly for Mitch Miner, he would still not capture the cup, but he would lead the playoffs in points tied with Natchez for 34. Everyone's favorite player, Clem Costin, obviously, led the entire playoffs in goals with 15. Man, Burray, you gotta get out of there. Six games played, four goals, seven assists for 11 points to lead the team. He did all he could, but they still can't win a playoff series. First year was by far the best so far. And Leon Dreisaitl on the Islanders would capture regular season MVP. Quinn Hughes wins his second Norris of the Sim. Pierre Lick Dubois is your playoff MVP. Klim was robbed. How could they not give it to him? Klim is him. And Spencer Knight also captures his second Vesna of the day. Year number five, the halfway point. Bure has locked in his faith. Unless they trade him, he will be a Vancouver Canuck for our entire Sim. 
Six years, $10.8 million. Uh, update, the team's actually worse because their starting goalie is Forsberg instead of Demko. I mean, with that being said, they're doing just fine. 49, 24, and nine record, earning 107 points for second in the entire league. So who am I to say what's good and what's bad? For 89 points for second on the team, Hughes would lead the entire team with 90. Only 39 goals for Bure, which did lead the team, but I was expecting way more production from him. I feel like I'm getting scammed right now. Kucherov would lead the entire league in points with 111, while him and Ovi would tie for most goals with 54. I said I was just cup chasing at this point. He's now on LA. After beating the Dallas Stars in five games in the conference finals, Burry would see his first Stanley Cup in the modern era. Sadly, that's where the Cinderella story ends as the Rangers would sweep them in the finals to lift the cup. Burry was second with 25 in his 20 games played. He also scored 11 goals. Kita Kucherov grabs your regular season MVP with Adam Fox winning playoff MVP. Vancouver has kind of got him some help and 38 year old Steven Stankos who is still in 86 overall, not too bad. And apparently there's no goalies in the world that wanna play in Vancouver cause what the heck am I looking at? I mean, they got Grubauer, but he's kind of washed now at 76 overall. Vancouver still doing pretty dang good in the regular season a 44 27 and 11 record earning 99 points for seventh in the league it's fine pedersen would leave vancouver with 83 points Bure right behind him at 82 he would lead the team in goals once again with 37 but he should be in my eyes at least a 40 goal scorer every season and nico he on the nashville predators is your regular season point leader with 112 while it would be david pasternak still in boston with 60 goals to lead the league there vancouver canucks Stanley Cup championship curse isn't going anywhere as they'd lose to Edmonton in six games in the first round, while the LA Kings are your Stanley Cup champions, beating the Montreal Canadiens in seven games. And Dry Seidel, who is clearly ring chasing at this point in his career, does get the job done with a 36 point performance in the playoffs for LA to lead the league. You may have heard of Connor Bedard, but are you ready for Miles Berard? I don't think so. Ego he sure grabs regular season MVP, and your playoff MVP is LA Leon. Year number seven, Pavel Burry is a 95 overall, still playing with Pedersen, this time with Uglander as his left wing. Vancouver is able to make the playoffs. They finish 17th in the entire league with a 44, 35, and 3 record, earning 91 points. And this is the Burry I was expecting every season he finished with 93 points to lead the team he also led the team in goals with 57. O'Connor with 107 points on Arizona to lead the league while it would be Bure leading the league in goals with his 57. The LA Kings are starting to look like a dynasty once again beating the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Stanley Cup Finals in seven games to lift the cup. Leon Dreisaitl is just going crazy in LA 43 points in 27 playoff games to lead the league he also led the league in playoff goals with 19. Bure would drop 12 points he'd have four goals and eight assists in 12 games played. Kyle Connor wins regular season MVP. Oh, Leon Dreisettle grabs back-to-back -back playoff MVPs. Year number eight, Burray is at a 96 overall. I believe that is his peak. He keeps bouncing from 96 to 95 over and over again. Vancouver finishes fourth in the entire league with a 47, 27, and eight record, earning 102 points. It would be Pedersen leading Vancouver in points with 101. Pavel Burray would lead them in goals, scoring 49, he also had 78 points total. In terms of the entire league, Mariner, still a member of Carolina, led the league in points with 110. And I told everyone they weren't ready. Miles Berard scores the most goals in the league with 54. Burry had to settle for second place. And for the second time, the Vancouver Canucks would be going to the Stanley Cup Finals, beating the Dallas Stars in four games in the conference finals. But once again, they suffer another heartbreak as they would lose to the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Stanley Cup Finals in five games. Win Hughes led the entire playoffs in points with 30 points, all of them being assists. Burry scoring 11 goals having 10 assists for 21 points in 20 games. Johnny Gaudreau, who made the comment he came to Columbus to win hockey games, finally came through on that promise as he'd lift the Stanley Cup with the boys. Elias Pettersson has stolen Burray's MVP as the first Canuck to win the award in our simulation. And Johnny Hockey is your playoff MVP. Oh, and if you were wondering, Vasilevsky is apparently still good in 2029, 20, 2030, as he'd win the Vesna. Murray is running out of time, only two seasons left. He's at a 95 overall in his ninth season, still playing with Pedersen. Vancouver sneaking into the playoffs once again with a 42, 36, and four record, earning 88 points for 16th in the entire league. A great season for Pedersen and Murray. Pedersen would finish with 107 points to lead the team. 
Burray right behind him with 104. All Burray would lead the team in goals with 57. Connor Bedard would have an absolute blast as well. 107 points tied Pedersen for top of the league. Might steal the MVP from Burray after all. Burray's 57 goals tied Pasternak for top of the league. I'm interested to see who wins MVP, that's for sure. It would be the New York Islanders winning the Stanley Cup, beating LA in five games. As Bo Horvat and Philip Forsberg would prove to be enough for the Islanders to win the Cup. Of all the points that we just saw, who do you think's winning regular season MVP, huh? Bedard? Berard Bure? No, it was Philip Forsberg, and he would also win playoff MVP, which does make way more sense because they did win the cup and he was the best player on their team. And almost a decade after capturing the Calder, Cider would win the James Norris Trophy. Bure's 10th and final season of this simulation. He is a 96 overall. Pedersen sitting at a 93. Let's see if he can win a stanley cup ah uh, yeah about that vancouver and not good anymore apparently a 31 45 and 6 record earning 68 points finishing 31st in the entire league Pavel Berry at 30 years old a 78 point season 35 goals leading the team in both those categories in terms of the entire league carolina is looking dangerous 119 points for mariner leading the league sveshnikov was right behind him with 118 points and we're officially at that part of the sim as johnny sylvester would lead the league in goals with 62. Oh! I mean, hey, Miles Berard, another 50 goal season. Keep racking him up, buddy. He did better than friggin' Burry this whole sim. And I mean, we saw how stacked they were looking, the Carolina Hurricanes, Irish Stanley Cup champions, after beating San Jose in five games. Well, since Vancouver didn't make the playoffs, I'm curious to see if Burry moves on to a different team or not. And if he does, we'll do one more season. But if he stays with Vancouver, I'm done. Marner is regular season MVP, and Marner is also your playoff MVP. Boy, am I ever glad I tried one more season as Pavel Burry would join the Anaheim Ducks to play with Connor Bedard and a 37 year old Nathan McKinnon on the first line and I don't know who the heck Stefan Francois is but he is our goalie hopefully he's good because our backup goalie is Cole Yakovo. he's a 62 overall thankfully Anaheim is able to make the playoffs as they finish with a 46 34 and 2 record earning 94 points for ninth in the league Murray would leave the Ducks in points with 100 on the dot Bedard would get 95 while McKinnon got 91 pretty good for a 37 year old Murray would also finish top of the team in goals with 43 a sack Sadly, I don't think Burry is getting an MVP still as Matthews at 35 years old on Calgary at 121 points and scored 46 goals. While Nicholas Vikingstad was your goal scoring leader in the league. He scored 60. Miles Berard at 57. Sadly, the Bedard and Burry combo isn't enough as Anaheim would lose to Seattle in the second round after beating San Jose five games in the first round. And the Calgary Flames would beat Montreal in the Stanley Cup Finals in seven games to lift the cup. Matthews finally getting his cup as he'd win regular season MVP along with playoff MVP. So Burry in the regular season played 902 games total, scored 468 goals while racking up 503 assists for a total of 971 points, which does put him at over a point per game. But I was still expecting a little bit more from him. But when you do compare it to Burry stats in his actual career, he averaged one point. 109 points per game in his career While in this simulation he averaged 1.076 points per game slightly worse so honestly i'd consider this simulation a win after 11 seasons burray would make the stanley cup finals two times and lose both times capturing zero stanley cup rings and zero league mvps that is going to be it for me today thank you everybody so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will catch you in the next one peace out